This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. The Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. We're talking with Amy E. Thomas, author of the book, Confessions of a Sociopath, A Life Spent Hiding in Plain Sight. It's so fascinating. Emmy herself diagnosed as a sociopath and in this uh, takes us kind of on her journey and tells us what it's like thinking uh, this way uh, and uh, helps uh, have us better understand how uh, the mind like this works uh, as opposed to a neurotypical uh, individual. The difference between living with this and living a productive life and, uh, you know, finding ways to get along with others and those who end up taking this down a dark road. I know you had mentioned manipulating people was something that you wanted to learn to break away from. Obviously, some people go far beyond that into to violent territory. Was that something that you felt it would have been easy to almost fall into? Or is that uh, takes another type of uh, layer to a human being to take this further and darker? I would say probably another layer, you know, they're installing along the stretch of the freeway where I live, like a new type of guardrail, Mm -hmm. the uh, cable kind. And I think like how many people must have died on the stretch of the freeway (laughs) in order for them to spend the money on the guardrail. Yeah. So I've been thinking about guardrails recently, you know, and uh, most most drivers like I've never seen an accident on that stretch of the freeway, but Uh it it must be happening. Right. Because otherwise they wouldn't install it. And I think for a lot of people, they have the guardrail of, you know, empathy is a big one where they think, you know, I, I could never do something bad to another person because I have this guardrail of empathy that makes me feel bad when I do it. You know, so there's there's really no kind of incentive to do it. And I can see like if you don't have that guardrail of empathy and you don't have the guardrail of something else to kind of replace it, then I could see that uh, if you were already inclined to uh, hurting people, it would be easier and you probably would get more pleasure out of it than you would if if not. You know, it reminds me I have a a friend who uh, uh, is an alcoholic and then, you know, got out of rehab and got, I forget what the shot is, but it makes it so the alcohol doesn't have as much of the effect, you know, and the idea is to try to disassociate that connection in your mind between, you know, drinking the alcohol and getting pleasure because the idea is you'll drink the alcohol, but nothing will happen. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that you have to, if you are conscientious enough, you know, even as a psychopath, as a sociopath to realize, you know, some of these behaviors are really just going to lead me to a bad place. There are other things that you can kind of replace it with. You know, for me, I grew up Mormon and uh-huh. I I found the teachings to be like really light, you know, and really um like I did appreciate them even as a child. I like to, to think, you know, there's somebody named Jesus who loves me, you know, <laughs> it like sure. appealed to me and it appealed to my grandiosity too a little bit because, you know, especially in Mormon theology, kind of a little bit famously amongst Christian religions, the idea is that, you know, there's the famous couplet as, as God or as man is, God once was as God is, man can become. So the thought that we're all going to grow to be like God Uh is like a a Mormon tenet. And so I thought, yeah, you know, that makes sense to me. I'm also going to be a God of (laughs) worlds or whatever, (laughs) right? In order to get there, though, you had to, you know, sit still in church and you had to, you had to do these things. And so I kind of got used to thinking, you know, just like I can, I can get the things that I want in school, I just do my homework and I can get the things I want in life by, you know, go to law school. And, you know, I kind of just got used to doing that where I thought, well, I can just do these things instead to get the things that I want. And I, you know, even though I like the physicality uh, of, of kind of violent activities, you know, I've always been attracted to things like football, you know, flag football, which really kind of gets a little rough or like I wanted for a while to be a roller derby Mm -hmm skater sure, <laughs> sure, yeah. i was like yeah or like even like world of wrestling we used to kind of pretend that you know like i've always liked uh even when i surf you know i don't mind crashing i almost liked having my body thrashed around in the wave you know there are things like that that i enjoy i never have had kind of bloodlust but it is true that i know people that have and i think you know, one thing about bloodlust, I think it's often associated with psychopaths, but I kind of think, you know, psychopaths feel powerful. They tend to feel powerful and uh, and seek power, too. But if somebody is like 
if somebody needs to hurt somebody in order to feel powerful, it, it feels to me, you know, just my own reaction is that that person must feel weak, you know, and I don't really relate to that. Sure. So, yeah. Is it is it the extremes of behavior that that is attractive? You had mentioned, you know, some people getting pleasure out of out of hurting people. Uh, and, and to everyone, you know, who doesn't have that, it's it's not something that you necessarily have pleasure. And it's an intense emotion if you hurt someone intentionally or accidentally. Uh, but it's it's not necessarily pleasurable. Uh, is that something where because there seems to be uh, or the, the volume is always very low and you're not necessarily, you know, feeling things uh, on a, a, a healthy level of, of others, uh, that it takes such extremes uh, and, and you're attracted to such extremes because it does make you feel something. My example would be like in a, in a murderous type situation where a killer goes and does something extreme, uh, stabs a bunch of people, for example, like the Brian Koberger situation and the allegations against him. Uh, he talked about not having the way, an ability to feel, not, not feeling empathy, not feeling anything when he's hugging grandparents and it like switched over for him uh, in his youth, all of a sudden that those feelings were just gone and you didn't know where or why it happened, but they weren't there. Uh, is it like the only way you can kind of get that, uh, I don't want to say rush, but just a ability to feel something that uh, makes individuals with uh, that are sociopathic in some cases uh, carry out violent crimes? You know, it's a good question. I think um, I, I should pause and say that I think a lot of kind of the most famous killers are not sociopaths. Like okay. probably the only ones I think are like, you know, Ted Bundy. Sure. You know, super charming guy or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But like you're I like I'm I don't know that much about that many of them. But like Jeffrey Dahmer just seems like he has like a mood disorder or something. But if if it's true that somebody's saying they they don't feel anything and that they feel that they kind of need that sort of stimulation. It's a little bit like the existential angst that I was referencing, you know, uh, about, you know, when I was a younger person, kind of in my 20s, yeah. is when I started to feel this existential angst, where I realized, you know, it's it's kind of a superpower to not care what anybody thinks. Yeah. But then the flip side of it is you don't take anything personally. And if you if you don't take anything personally and you don't really have a sense of self, there's never self-expression for you. Like nothing matters. Everything has like the this absurdist quality, kind of like the French absurdist writers yeah. where it, you know, there's there's nothing that seems to matter. And then you you always hope that that's not true. You always hope that finally something is going to matter to you. And there's almost like a craving to prove to yourself that something does matter. Uh -huh. So I could kind of see this with people like that. I don't, I probably don't think it's like thrill seeking, mm -hmm. you know, something like that, something such a big splash. Maybe it is to finally feel like, you know, this, this actually did matter to me because if nothing matters to you, then life seems meaningless. And if life seems meaningless, then, you know, there's, there's a huge, existential chasm that you're going to yeah. constantly be experiencing in terms of like, why am I alive? You know, what am I even here for? What's the, what's the purpose of consciousness? You know, it's very, I would imagine unsettling to experience it. I've experienced it like just a little bit in terms of boredom, but I imagine if your brain has been disconnected so much, either through like psychopathy or from whatever else, there could be a brain tumor yeah. or there could be anything else that's kind of disconnecting you from like a sense that, uh, of meaninglessness uh, or a sense of meaning, I guess, disconnect you from a sense of meaning, then yeah, you would, that would be so haunting. I can't imagine like life lived that way. If you didn't turn to suicide, it seemed like you would turn to like very outrageous behavior yeah. because I have sensed, you know, this uh, existential angst just a little bit. And it's, it's, uh, it's the worst feeling in the world. Like you could not live that way. And it was finally what caused me to, you know, be like, you know, I'll give up the superpowers, some of the superpowers of psychopathy sure. and make a huge change in my life because I was like, I cannot keep living this way. Yeah. You know, something has to be different. I mean, would uh, do uh, sociopaths turn to suicide often or if there's that lack of feeling there, is there depression? I mean, it does depression exist for for one like that. If, if the emotions aren't there to begin with. I wouldn't call it depression. I would just say it's an extreme lack of engagement okay. with the world. 
Yeah. Where like nothing seems to kind of stimulate you. Nothing seems to kind of engage you. And a lot of psychopaths I've talked to describe this as boredom. Okay. So it's boredom, but they feel it in such a physical oppressive way, you know, worse than being sick, worse than being so sick that you need to be hospitalized. That's how, how they feel it and they dread it. Yeah. And so they do things to tr try to avoid the boredom. So some of this, you know, stimulating kind of things, they're just trying to find something that engages them. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. The Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. We still have more coming up with uh, M.E. Thomas, so be sure to press subscribe wherever you download podcasts so you don't miss any more of that conversation. It's coming to you just a little bit right here on this very feed. If you want to uh, follow any of the uh, cases uh, on a specific channel, we got it for you. The links of uh, all of our podcast channels in the episode description. Be sure to check that out. Get a commercial free experience through Apple Podcasts right now as well. I'm Tony Bruce. Stay with us.